Welcome to Let's Calculate Something. Today we're going to cover uh, 3D printing and one of the biggest challenges 3D printers have um, is to level the bed and most issues that we see that come up about poor quality prints or, or bad benches or whatever it, it a lot of time centers around leveling the bed and so what we're going to do is we're going to go through a few things. We're going to leverage Octoprint um, which I have a video on how to set up with a Raspberry Pi. You can set it up with other devices if you can't get your hands on a Raspberry Pi. doesn't really matter as long as you're using Octoprint. Um, there's a, a bed leveler uh, in there that we're going to use. And then there's a lot of features in that bed leveler that a lot of people don't know about. So if you stick through the video you're going to see what they are. And I've made a couple things. So first of all we're going to upgrade our, our bed leveling system with this little kit here from Creality. Uh, there's equivalent kits for other printers as well. This is the one I chose. You can find it in the um, link below uh, from our affiliate link. If you uh, purchase it through that affiliate link you'll help the channel out. It doesn't cost you any more. Um, but what it comes with is um, some really nice uh, alloy wheels. Uh, four of them. And then a much stronger screw or spring. Sorry. Um, this spring is a lot more stiff than the the springs that come with the Ender. We have an Ender S1 Pro uh, that come with that, and it lets you hold your level a little longer because as the uh, as the print bed moves around and accelerates, it, it, those little vibrations tend to uh, get your bed out of level. So this stiffer spring will hold that level a lot better. It's a yellow spring. You'll see the ones that are on the on the machine um, are a are orange spring. This is just a little stiffer. Comes with a new screw, which you don't really need. You can use the old screws if you want to. Um, but this this spring is going to help us. And so we're really going to ins quickly install this. This is a pretty straightforward installation. And then we're going to use Octoprint um, bed level or bed imaging to to re-level the bed and um, that's going to be where we bring into into play a couple extra things so I made this little guide here which is a pointer um, and that pointer is going to be used with a tiny protractor that I made and you can get the links for both of these this is on Thingiverse the little I printed this uh, printed this guy uh, I printed four of them and they go on each wheel you set that up and then basically when we look in Octoprint we'll know how many degrees we need to adjust whether it's up or down uh, each wheel uh, in each corner of the of the bed to get it level so this way you're doing precise mechanical um, calculated amounts of movement versus guesswork because um, the guesswork causes you to do a lot of trial and error re-level the bed check it again and it takes a long time this method, which I'm going to show you, is going to save you a lot of time and get your bed level um, as accurate as it can be. Um, you may have some little warping on the bed. We're, we're talking, um, you know, hundreds of a millimeter now. Um, so it won't be perfect, but it's going to not get in the way of your quality of your print. Okay? So stick with me and let me take you through uh, exactly how we did that. So you can uh, learn and you can do it too. All you need are to buy the kit and print these little inserts and then I have a file that already I've made this in Excel you can print it out on I printed it on nice cardboard and then you can um, you know heavier heavier cardstock I should say um, and then you can print those and use them in each corner um, and we'll talk a little bit about how to know whether to turn counterclockwise or clockwise we're going to go through all that so um, you're a few minutes away to being able to level your 3D printer bed better than you ever could before. Okay, thanks, and uh, we'll jump into the video. Okay, so now what we want to do is set up the um, the uh, bed visualizer, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to um, the plugin manager. We're going to go to Get More. <clears throat> we're going to look up bed. And there it is, Bed Visualizer. We're going to install this. Pretty simple. It'll install a few minutes, and then we have to reboot our um, Octopi.
Okay, so let's restart. Let's take a couple seconds. After this reboots, then we want to go ahead and we're going to go get the G code that's necessary to load into it. And from there, we'll be in pretty good shape. Um, we shouldn't have to do a lot more. And we'll get into uh, leveling the bed after we install the, um, the new uh, leveling set. You might hear some rain in the background. It's raining pretty hard here right now. Okay, so let's see that our bed visualizer is installed, and it is. We can clear out this. This is some previous work that I had done. Um, and at this point... Okay, so now that we've installed our bed leveler, bed visualizer, I should say, we have to be able to um, get the G code commands necessary and we can get those in the settings um, and the where we're going to get that is from this support tab and you click on the wiki and then you scroll down a little while here a little bit and you come to let's see where is it it's a little hard to find here it is um, G code commands for the mesh update process we're going to click this key here and then out here we can find um, the G code commands and we're going to use the bilinear bed leveling one and that one is this we're going to copy this and then we're going to go back to octoprint and we are going to go close this and oops sorry should do that we want to put this in Collection right here. Okay, so it's already in here. I'm going to re repaste it. There we go. It stayed in from before. I guess I've had this installed before and I kept it. But that's what you'll need to do when you install it for the first time. Let's put it right here. And the key thing is um, this is nice because this does store the mesh and the EE prom. So that means every time you uh, go to run another print, it's going to use that mesh. So that's great. So now we'll save this. And then we'll go out to, um, to, the, to the machine. And we will look at the installation of that new kit. And then a couple of the other tricks that we have printed out that I want to share with you. So let's go to the machine and let's see if we can get those new, that new kit installed. And then we'll run a mesh and see where we're at. Okay, so now it's time to install <clears throat> our new leveling kit, right? And there's a few things I want to point out. These four screws right here, they come with the kit, but we're going to discard them. We don't need them. It's very difficult to take out the screws that are on the bed, and you, they're, they're the same screw, so there's no need to even waste time on that. Second thing I want to show you is that the orientation of these, these wheels, there's a, there's a raised part here, and it's flat here. We're going to want to put this raised part facing up, okay? Here's the new springs, which we're going to use. Um, these are stronger springs, which will help us hold our level longer. And so the first thing we have to do is disconnect and take out the existing, <clears throat> take out the existing wheels and leveling system. And then we're going to replace this. And I'm going to show you a trick. So stick and watch this because there's... It's a nice little trick to get this back put together quickly that I want to share. So um, let's take these off. We're going to use the right hand rule. If we turn this way, the direction of our thumb tells us what, what direction this is going to rotate into. And so we just rotated it the other way and our thumb is down and that takes the wheel off. Okay, so we'll just take all four off. Take off an old spring, put on a new spring, try to go back into the same spot if you can. Here we go. So the new spring is installed. 
kind of find that hole again. There we go. So now you're going to want to spin these on. You're going to turn them this way. Just line them up with this screw. Spin them on. And this one is the easiest one for me. That's on. Can't get it. So I'm going to use my trick. So what you do is you take your cutting knife, your your, um, and you put that underneath and you use it to hold it and then once you line it up you can spin it on that knife and it goes on real easy that's how we'll do it set it on put it under line it up spin it the right direction and it's on. Awesome. Okay, now we got that last one to do. It helps me to have the bed all the way forward. Then you have nice access to these back corners. It'd be a little tricky. Okay, so they're all on. Now what we do is we'll tighten them up. I like to tighten them up about halfway, a few turns. So I see some tension. You can see the space in the springs. You don't want to go too far. But you do want to tighten them up so you have room to go both up and down. And we're not too worried about how accurate it's going to be. It's going to be way off when we do our first scan. But it doesn't matter because we're going to have a, a nice technique to bring this um, together. So we're gonna go this way. And you can actually see the bed tightening down. I'm gonna go this way, right? Yep, you can see it coming down a little. And we're gonna be way off, but we're not worried about it. All right, so I think that's pretty good. We got some tension. I could feel the tension in the wheels. I like to go about halfway, and we'll see. Um, not halfway, but a few turns. That's all you need. So now what we're going to do is go run the, the visualizer, run the leveling, and we'll come back and make adjustments. So now we're back at the, um, at the uh, bed visualizer, and so what we're going to do is go ahead and update the mesh. And what it does, <clears throat> it's going to send some control commands out, and we're going to set up the bed, and we're going to go to 60 degrees, because you always want to do your leveling with a, with a heated bed. Um, and it's going to go, and it's going to scan the bed in 16 places. And I'll, I'll fast forward through this, but then we'll, we'll see our mesh. First, it does its initial checks to find out where the bed is actually at, so it doesn't press the um, the nozzle or into the bed um, so it's going to find that out then it's going to pull over and wait for the um, for the bed to heat up and then it will go ahead and start so let's see uh, let's watch our temperature climb this is a cool thing about octoprint you can um, you can watch the temperature it's up to 44 already and you'll notice I'm going to overshoot it some um, and I'm gonna I haven't tuned this yet uh, I need to do that, and I'll do another video on that. You'll see. Okay, so now you can see it's starting. It's um, getting the mesh, and it's going to run that, you know, on 16 different points. Okay, so now it's done. It's going to return to the home position. And we can go see what our visualization looks like. <laughs> Horrible. Okay, so it's way off. I mean, that is as bad as you can get. But that's okay, because we have a trick 
to uh, to get that done. All right. So now what we can do is look at this. Let's learn a little bit about. So this is a three-dimensional representation of our bed. This is the point of zero zero, and z is down by 1.1635 millimeters. But this is the zero zero on the level plane, right? Then this is zero to twenty. Um, but this is the look at that. That's the y zero. So this is normally our origin, um, and so what we want to do is come over here, right here. That's our zero zero, and then if we go along the y toward the back, this is our back corner. X is zero, y is two twenty. Here, um, y is zero and x is two twenty, and here they're both two twenty. Okay, so that's going to be important in how we orientate this. Now, what's cool is you can come into this and look at the data. You can see exactly how far off it is in millimeters, and it's kind of hard to read. You could copy this and put it in Excel, and I've done that, but it's not as helpful as this. So what this is, this is the bed. Um, this is the bed, and it tells us really how much we have to turn this, okay? Um, and that is, this is like two rotations and a two and a third rotations. So you can see, I can't click on this, but if you see it says turn right two and one third rotation, because this is, it's asking us to turn it 838 degrees and 360 degrees is one rotation. So this thing is really way off. Now, what's really important here is that we have to get the axis oriented, okay? So when we looked at this chart, we said this was zero, zero. And we see that's really low, right? That's our lowest point on the whole thing because it shows min right there. So now when we go here, let's go find our lowest point on the corrections. And this says raise it, right? So this is zero, zero because look, here is um, y position zero. Here is x position zero. And so it's up here. It's not down here where you'd expect it to be, like the same as the picture. So you have to be real careful. Um, so this is zero zero, and that's what we're gonna we're gonna write that down. Now, I have created a um, I've created a, a little sheet that we'll use for this template, and what it is is I tell okay which trial it is. You Fill that out, and you say whether you're going to raise or lower, raise or lower each corner. And we have to orientate this absolutely correct. This will be 0, 0. This is um, 0, 2, 20. This is 2, 20, 2, 20. And this is 0, 2, 20. And 2, 20 is the size of my bed. It's 2, 20 millimeters by 2, 20 millimeters. Probably should have drawn this, drawn this as a square, but don't worry about it. It's okay. This is the front, okay? So what we're going to do is, this is trial one, we're going to write down those four um, rotations, then we're going to go to the machine and do that rotation, okay? So I just wanted to show you this, and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to write that stuff down, and then I'm going to go to the machine, and what we're going to use is we have these protractors to help us, we put this in each corner, um, it's defined back, left, so we're going to put set this one down at the back left, I've already cut these out. Um, this is back right, this is front right, this is front left, and we're going to use these protractors to zero in on how much we should turn this. And we're going to use those little pointers that I talked about to tell us how far we are on that wheel. Now, the, the first one we have to turn a couple of times to get really kind of squared away. We're not going to use these right away, but we're going to use them later. All right, but we are going to use this. And so let me, um, let me work this out and then I'll go go to the machine and show it to you okay so we've got our adjustments from the bed visualizer and you can see we've, we're gonna raise this is the front so we'll start over here and we're gonna raise this one up two and one-third uh, turns we're gonna raise this one about two turns which is 735 degrees we're gonna lower I'm sorry we're gonna lower this one we're going to lower that one by about two and three quarter turns and we're going to raise this one three quarters of a turn 
So when we orient this like that, then it tells us what to do. Now, since we're going round and round uh, with the wheel, because we have to do multiple turns, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to take a post-it, and it's got the sticky side. And I'm just going to grab, cut a little triangle off that, and I'm going to stick that onto the wheel, okay, so that I can know when I go around. It doesn't have to be perfect, because this is... These are some pretty gross adjustments. They're big. So I just want to be close. Um, and I'm just going to use this to, to as a reference point on the wheel because you'll get lost trying to turn it. Um, so I'll stick one of these on each corner. And it's just a little mark. I just don't want to do it with a marker or anything because I don't want it to be permanent. We'll peel this off and we'll use our um, the things we printed. Um the markers to, that we want to print okay and clearly you would print those out prior to you installing this so that you'd have them when we're done um, and you could you could do that with your the bed how you had it they're not very they're, they're not too demanding from a printing point of view you'll be able to print them pretty easily and you can get them on thingiverse the link is in the comments and you can use that to uh, print those out first so you have them, and I'm just going to put these on each wheel as a little reference marker. They, these, these here are not designed to go round and round. They're designed for finer movements, and so they will fall off once they go past that point. So you'll want to use the, the post-it, but then I like using this because it's very pointy and consistent. Okay, and you print these out. There's four of them. On Thingiverse, you'll get that print out, and you can print them out. Okay, all right. So let's start our turns. So we can lay this right here. We know this one is going to turn two and a third, and we're going to go um, up. Okay, so we want to go up. So that means we want to we want to be able to turn it this way. Okay, down. So we're going to turn that down two. There's one and a third turn. So there's one, two, and a third. It's right about there. Okay. This one, we have to turn down. So that means we're going to tighten it up. We're going to turn it this way. We're going to tighten the spring, which is going to bring it down to about two turns. So... There's one, two. Okay, we got two turns on that one. And then we're going to do the same on the back, same direction. Okay, so that's done. Um, now, take our paper and we'll go figure out, we're going to run the bed visualizer, then we're going to fill out trial number two. Okay, so we got the results back from our first iteration, and you can see it's better, but it's not good enough yet, right? So we have some more adjustments to make. Um, if you notice this one here, this corner, the front corner, the origin, it's pretty good. It's only off by a hundredth of a millimeter. So we're gonna we're gonna do something here where we're gonna make that our um, we're gonna make that our basis. So see here where we have eight. That's that's the front corner going to click on that and now that's our zero so we're not going to mess with that one um what we're going to do is use our little sheet and we're going to transfer these these here we're going to we're going to look at zero and 220 zero and 220 on our our um on our uh, map says that uh with x well i'm sorry that's uh i'm sorry that is 220 zero 220 zero x is 220 y is zero um that is the lower right corner and we're going to bring that up 1.12 turns or 403 degrees and then when we come down to 220 220 which is the upper right corner we're going to bring that up um 265 degrees or three quarters of a turn this is the front right front left 
we're going to leave that alone and then we're going to modify um the uh the front the back left side 0.9 about 0.94 turns so about one turn we're going to go with one turn and that's about 338 degrees so let's go to the machine and let's or the printer and let's uh let's dial those in Okay, so I've transferred our uh, numbers from the bed visualizer to this sheet, and you can see we're going to adjust the back front, the back um, right corner down. We're going to adjust the the um, right front corner up, and we're going to adjust the back left corner down. And we're going to leave our origin alone. Okay, so let me make those changes, and then we'll run another scan. Okay. So that's done. Now let's go scan and see where we're at. Okay, so we're going to update the bet, the mesh now. Uh, this is for the uh, second second run. Let's see how we are. All right, so we can see our results from the last scan, and let's see where we're at. So a zero zero is a little high. The front is a little high, um, or the the right side is a little high. The left side, I can't. It's hard to say. So if you turn this, okay, there. So we could see that's um, zero zero. That is two twenty zero. So that's the front, right? The front's high, and the back is low. Okay, and we could see our delta is like 0 0.5, where the highest point is 0 0.33, and the lowest point is minus 0 0.17, which is probably right around here. Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna make those changes now for the third trial. Let's jump into the corrections. Um, this is the zero point. Um, we'll put that as, um, we'll lock that in, okay? And so now um, we're gonna transfer this onto the sheet for trial three. Okay, so for our setup for the third iteration or third trial, um, we're gonna, it's, we're going to use, um, make some small adjustments here. We see, we see now that we're zeroing in. The adjustments are getting smaller. So let me make those adjustments, adjustments and we'll run another trial. All right, so now we, uh, we've got these dialed in. So let's go ahead and update the mesh again. The temperature coming up, same drill as before. And you can see the head is starting to move around. and It'll go. I'm not going to take every one of these you guys can you're all familiar with how a printer works when it does a mesh so i'm gonna stop this recording for this one and then for the rest of them i'm just gonna kind of move through it quickly okay so wow this is a uh, excellent results we got some real leveling going on here about low about 0.06 max is 0.14 and now we're down to 0.2 which is a great improvement and so Let's see what adjustments are necessary next. Um, you can see if we pick our origin as our zero again, um, we have about, we're getting into like less than half a turn, very, very minute deals. So now we can start to use our template for the uh, rotation in our little uh, pointer that we printed out. So um, we'll be doing that in a second. I'll transfer these to our, our sheet and we'll we'll go from there okay we're back at the machine for trial four and you can see that now the movements are much lower we don't have to go full rotations we're going partial turns this one is the biggest uh change we're going to make and so what we've done is and i'll bring you a little closer is we've installed the uh the guides right so this guide is sitting at 149 degrees i have to raise it I'm going to follow my template. I've got my protractor built in here. Okay, so there it is. It's the front right. It comes from the template that you'll find on Thingiverse. Um, and so I'm going to rotate that one. I'm going to rotate this one. That one has the pointer as well, as you can see. And then over here, we're not going to rotate this one, so I didn't put the point pointer on. That's our zero reference. And then back here, let's see if you can see that a little better. Back there. Uh, we have to rotate that one only 40 degrees. Okay, we're going to raise it. So we're going to take it that way So let me make those rotations now 
and um, you can see how this works okay so this one has to go 149 I put that indexer or that pointer at 149 I'm just going to rotate it till it gets to the 180 over here and or the zero that's our 149 that's a raise of 149 that matches right here what we have on the card now this one has to raise 27 degrees so we can look carefully we can line this up and you can make that out of cardstock I printed it on paper but cardstock is way better um, I have some on cardstock I just can't find them um, and I would I would suggest that you use cardstock for that all right so let's go up uh, what do we say 27 degrees so that's 10 20 7 okay that's great and then on this back one we have to go up 40 degrees so we're sitting at say we're sitting at 70 I think so we have to go to 30 we have to raise it. Oh, I'm sorry we have to go to 110 we have to raise it and we can see we're right at 110 okay and that's all there is so now got our adjustments in let's go run it and see where we're at okay so you can see now how much this is improving right look at how much green we have very level level bed um if we zoom in you can see that the bed is incredibly level it's a little bit high like the whole bed is raised above this blue line this blue line is the zero z it doesn't matter if it's a little higher or lower as a whole bed. What we're looking for is the relative differences between the corners and between the surface. And it's getting that, those relative differences are really getting to be much smaller, which is awesome. So now let's go to our corrections. Um, we zeroed it up here again. Um, and you can see, look, four, four only, um, you know, 0 0.01 of a turn. I mean, that's, that's almost, we can't even really do that accurately. So that's dead on. This one's only a slight turn um, to lower it. And this is a slight turn to raise it. So we're getting really close. And this is where that template that we made is going to really help us zero in. So um, now you're seeing the, the, the benefits of, of downloading that Thingiverse template, putting those on your, your bed so you can understand what direction to go for the little protractors. And then using those inserts because they're pointed and they're they're very very accurate. So, um, excuse me, sorry, my phone rang. Um, so that is uh, that's going to be great. So I'm going to transfer these to a card. I made a few a little change to the card. If you notice, this is red here. That means lower, and this is blue. That means raise. And so I put some color codes on there. I'll show you when we get to the printer. But I just wanted to make that comment to make it a little more straightforward to. To track this it's already a nightmare with this um you know trying to figure out the the axis because it's not turned around to the same as the picture but we got that covered we, we we figured out a way to make sure we can be accurate with that okay so i'll be right back i'll see you at the i'll see you at the printer okay welcome back we're back at the printer and we have trial five these are the numbers i transferred from the uh bed visual visualizer and you can see we just have some tiny moves to make. I'll do those real quick and we'll scan again. And I think this will be our last try. Uh, this will be this will give us the very best results. And I think we're going to have, uh, we'll be done after this. So here we go. Uh, let me make those quick adjustments. Okay, so the results of trial five are in. And it's looking real good. I don't think that any further adjustments are really going to improve this very much. We're down to a 0.09 variance. And compared to where we started, that's pretty awesome. And we did it in just five moves, which is, I'm um, sure, a lot better than trial and error. Uh, it's, it's the best I, I've seen for my work. Um, when you look at the variance here, we're at 5, 9, 5, 0. If we pick this as our, you know, our spot, we're at 4, 9, 14. We could maybe make one more adjustment but i really don't think it's going to be uh, marginally better i think this is outstanding i think using the technique that we have here clearly shows that you can save a lot of time a lot of frustration um take your time walk through this this is the only problem with this whole thing are these axes but i've done everything i can with the template to help you with that and so i think we're going to call this a wrap 
Um, I'm real happy with this with this with this here, and I really don't know that it's going to be much better. Um, so I will call it a day, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, and you got some value out of this, please like, please subscribe, um, and leave a comment. Uh, hit the notification bell too, because when we put out more videos, I'm going to go over some cameras. I'm going to do some additional things and some prints, um, some techniques on that. Um, so you'll want to be aware of that. Um, so if you got value, please hit the like and subscribe. And we will uh, see you next time. Thank you. And this is Let's Calculate Something, signing out.